Hi, it's Penny here from the Patchwork Angel on the beautiful Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia. Today I want to talk to you about the Teflon applique mats that we use for when we're doing applique. Sort of like the little babushka dolls we've got here on this quilt. But today we're going to do the little angel that's on this pattern. This one's from Claire Turpin and it's called Angel Delight. And it's a little applique angel onto a cushion ready for your little angel for Christmas. So, first up what you have to do is take your pattern pieces out and on the sheets Claire already has them exploded and we call this exploded when it means the parts are all separate. So what you have to do is trace off all your pattern pieces onto some adhesive web. We sell a great adhesive web, another brand name for it is Flies Affix, we don't actually use that one but an adhesive web, any whatever you use is fine. So you're going to trace your pattern pieces off you can use your sew line pencil or any other lead pencil for that. So tracing off, don't get yourself in too much of a state with it. As long as it's pretty well the same shape, you're going to not get into trouble. Okay, so we'll trace those off. Once we've got them all traced off, we'll roughly cut them out. You'll notice here that all these pieces are the same colour on the pattern. So the feet, the hands and the face. So I've grouped them together when I've traced them off. That means I can leave them together and iron them onto the fabric. Let me show you that. So onto the back of your fabric. Now I'm going to stress the back of your fabric because I have had a few people who've ironed it onto the front of their fabric. With this fabric it wouldn't matter. But with one of these we'd be in trouble. So we'll iron this on and you'll notice it sticks. Now remember that's glue so it can make a big mess with your iron. Okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to iron all my pieces onto the back of my fabric. I'm going to cut them out exactly on the lines and I'll be back with you shortly. so here we are back again so just to recap we're making the little angel on the angel delight pattern we've traced off our pattern pieces from our sheets that were exploded earlier onto an adhesive web onto the paper side of the adhesive web okay we've done that we've then roughly cut them out of the adhesive web and ironed them onto the back of our fabric the back of the fabric we've then cut them out exactly so we then cut them out exactly on the line. So this is one of our wings, we've cut it out on the line. There again, don't get yourself in a state. Here's a little tip about corners. Blanket stitch doesn't really like going on a pointy corner, so curve any pointy corners. You'll find it easier to stitch later. So now we whip out our lovely Teflon mat. And as you can see, mine's had lots and lots of use. To my knowledge, this is the same as what the chefs use for baking cookies on. I've never tried doing it, so don't. But I've felt them in the baking shops or in the kitchen shops, and they seem to be the same. So um, ours are a lot less expensive than the ones in the shops. So now what we're going to do, we're going to start putting our little girl together. So we start off by peeling the backing paper off our applique shapes. Now some people find this really, really hard. And you watch today, I'll find it really hard too. Uh, there we go. So if you just sort of crease the edge, it just starts to come away. So we're going to pop that down on our applique mat. Right. We're now going to pop the head down on the applique mat. And there again, I'm trying to get a little crease just to start that peel away. If you find that the webbing is not attached to the back of the fabric, so the fabric should have a slight sheen to it, then go back and iron it a bit more. It just means it hasn't um, adhered properly. And don't try and peel it off when it's still warm. Make sure it's cool. Okay, so we're going to lay that there. And with this particular pattern that Claire's done, I'm just going to grab that pattern and, and look back at the picture again. You can see it's actually in reverse there. So I'm going to line that up. And I'm just going to give that a quick little press with the iron. Now what you'll notice is that the fabric sticks to the Teflon mat and it sticks to each other but I can still 
I'm just going to get rid of that bit of rubbish, throw it in a bit. I can peel it off the mat. So now I've got this piece ready to applique. But I'll keep going and keep building my angel. So now let's put her fringe on. So that's this little bit here. Now I have left fairly sharp corners on this one. And what I'll have to do as I blanket stitch that down, I'll just have to make sure that I anchor the corners as I go. So what you do is you pretend you're finishing off your blanket stitch and then you come back up and start stitching again. Okay, I've got to remember to smile, don't I? I mustn't forget to smile. We need more smiles in the world. Okay, so popping her fringe on, got that there, I'm going to press that into place. Try to press rather than iron, because if you iron sometimes they'll wrinkle up a little bit. Okay. All right, we've got a halo now. So on goes her halo. Can she get a piece? The other alternative is that you can score the back with a pin and some people show you that technique. Personally, I prefer this way, but if, if all else fails and the only way you can get it is with a pin, then go for that. Okay, looking back at my picture, the halo is behind her head. Obviously, it's an angel with halos up there. So we're going to pop that into place, making sure we've got enough of an overlap and we're going to press that down. Okay, you can see where I'm going with this now. I'm going to keep putting her together and I'm going to come back and show you how we send her onto the background fabric ready to stitch. Okay, so here we are back again for a third time. So I've just got the little legs ready. I've taken the backing paper off and you can see here I'm just lifting up and applique off the Teflon mat and popping the little legs in. I like the little legs with the toes just touching. What do you think? Yeah, I think that looks good. So then we just press them into place. Okay, there are great, lots of great uses for your applique mat too. You know how sometimes you have a t-shirt that has a print on it and it gets sticky on the iron? You can pop this over the top or anything where you need an ironing cloth or you're a bit worried over the top of your embroideries and stitcheries, it can help too. So it's a really handy tool. They are available on our website and they're called an a applique mat on the website. So if you're searching it on the website, it's applique mat. Just before we pop this onto the background too, I just want to tell you a quick bit about this. The, this is one of the pick and mix patterns that Claire Turpin does. Have a look at the whole range of pick and mix patterns because what you can do is you can take an applique and then she has quilt patterns that you can incorporate it into. They work really well. That way you get to design your own quilt and your own colours. So it's a really individual thing. Have a look at those too. Anyway, I just want to show you how this now peels off the applique mat and goes onto our background. First thing we need to do is find the centre of our background fabric. I've just got a fat quarter here. So I will just give it a quick little press that way, fold it the other way, line up the edges, quick little press, that gives us a, a pretty well, an approximate centre. I know I've still got a selvage on there that I'll trim off later, but that's fine because I'll probably trim the whole block down later. You find too, once when you blanket stitch and applique, that the um, actual background gets smaller too because of the stitching you do. Okay, so we're peeling her off. Here she comes. How she's coming off the whole applique mat all like one big decal. See coming to there they come. We're going to center her onto our background. We're going to make sure she's out nice and straight. See that bit just tucked down. We're going to open that up. Okay, we're going to make sure her feet are there. About three inches there, about three inches there. Look about the same to you? I think it does. Okay, there's another little curly bit there. Get her nice and flat. And we're going to press her into place. And once we press her into place, then she is stuck down. You can't move her now. Okay, so you're going to then start doing your blanket stitch. So, getting her all pressed into place. As you work doing your blanket stitch, you will find she'll lift a little bit. And you may need to go back to the iron and just touch up some spots where you're stitching. But that's okay too, it's because you're wrinkling it in your hands. My goodness, I think she looks so cute. 
I'm really pleased with her. What do you think? Doesn't she look gorgeous? Okay, so I'm going to now go and put on a good movie and sit down and do some lovely blanket stitching, which I really enjoy doing. I love the rhythm of it. I'll be using two strands of DMC thread or cottage garden thread. I'll be using a milliner's needle, which is my favourite needle for doing blanket stitch applique because the needle just slides through so beautifully. And I'll be having a lovely time stitching this. So I hope that you grab yourself an applique mat. As I say, you can see this one's been really well used. Just another hint, always keep them rolled rather than folded because they have a memory and you don't want that happening. So just always keep it rolled. We always have them in the classroom at the shop um, because our students often leave theirs at home and uh, they are such a handy tool to have. So make sure you grab one of these for doing blanket stitch applique. Have a look at the Claire Turpins pick and mix patterns because they really are fun. There's lots of lovely patterns there. Now I just want to mention to you too, while I've been doing this, our rescue dog Sarge has been in the room with me. So if you heard some funny noises, it wasn't me. It was Sarge. <laughs> Who's looking very relaxed there on the floor. So um, we're having a lovely time with Sarge. He's our new rescue dog, so we're really happy with him. So as I say, get stitching, have fun with some applique, start perhaps some Christmas projects now. Never too early. Okay, so that's me, Penny from the Patchwork Angel on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland and I will get back to you soon. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, give us the little thumbs up on the subscription thing on YouTube, all that stuff, okay, and keep on stitching.